Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Stationeers. This episode might end up being a little bit shorter than some of the previous ones. I'm sort of... Uh, well, I'm unsure. I won't know until after I've edited this one, but uh, I've been a little more aggressive in how I'm cutting things out. Been trimming out trips to get water. I've been obviously cutting out the uh, mining trips in the past. Uh, prior to recording this, I have made uh, quite a few trips to go get more materials, uh, a lot more copper, a lot more uh, silicon. I've also made some more solder and steel. Uh, I think I'm going to sort of focus on the projects that we do in these videos, because that seems to be really where the meat of it's at. I don't plan to turn off or change the hunger settings or uh, use the 50 ore mod that I normally would use. I'm keeping the settings the same, the difficulty the same, but trimming out all those things that just kind of slow things down. So with that said, uh, let's get right to it. I have a, a couple of projects in mind for this episode. And the first one is going to be this right here. We're going to add a radiative cooling loop to our hot waste storage. Now, you may be wondering, well, we did all the efforts in the previous episode to retain that heat. Why would we want to get rid of it? Uh, being able to have the option to cool this waste down means that if there's some material in this tank that we need, say we need nitrogen and there's none in the waste tank and there's none in this tank, but maybe there's some in here, if we need it immediately, we can cool things down so that it can get shuttled over to the, the bulk waste storage and then filtered out. So yeah, let's get on with that. Uh, the parts that we've got prepared here for this are uh, four stacks of pipe here. We probably won't need all of that, but we've got lots of pipe. We've got uh, 35 radiators, counting the 12 already in the cabinet. And uh, a volume pump and a digital valve. So to start things off, let's go ahead and get our attachments here. Gonna need one of these insulated pipes, I believe. Let's go ahead and uh, get all this stuff in inventory. Saving on paint by picking up
here we go. And again, just as a quick reminder, we're using purple for our hot materials. Anything hot or high pressure. Basically, gonna make an array of pipes here, about the same size as as our uh, tank. And there we go. slap our radiators on there. All right. And that's pretty much it, except for the wiring. Do want to give these meaningful names? Hydration critical. Okay. Now, the reason I used a digital valve, uh, in part, is just because I think they're cool. But also, at some point in the future, we may want to come back and automate this for some reason. So, for now, that's a, that's a digital valve. You could do this with a, a manual valve. If you do use a manual valve, you would have to come here to physically interact with it. But as it stands, it's not automated anyway, so I have to come here anyway. And as for this volume pump, we're just going to set it to max. And then we're going to turn it on and we're going to leave it on. Uh, again, you could automate that. You could uh, could work with them. Um, uh, you could manually turn it off so it's not wasting power. But I uh, prefer to just leave things like that on. Here we go. So the uh, the way this is going to work is basically uh, flip on the valve and it'll allow the materials in the hot waste line into the radiator loop and this pump will pump it out. And at any point if you turn this valve off, then this will continue to pump it out until it's empty. If we take a look at what we have right now, we get 543 degrees, so that's that's pretty toasty. And 
it's dropping pretty quickly. Of course, for now, we want to keep that heat because we have other uses for it. But if we need to cool it, we have the option now. All right, so our next project is going to be a very quick one. Uh, I used the electronics printer to print a mod for the hydraulic pipe bender. There, there it is. Pipe bender mod. Uh, there's the materials. 35 steel, 8 electrum, 8 constantin, 8 solder. And this is the finished result. Boop. There we go, we've upgraded this. Now that'll make it faster, but also um, I think it may unlock some more builds. Yeah, there we go, turbo volume pumps. That might be handy. may want to look into upgrading some of our volume pumps. So yeah, it's handy dandy. Our next project, we're going to bring our water storage into the atmospheric farm where it belongs. To do that, we've got a couple of stacks of uh, insulated liquid pipe. and a couple stacks of regular pipes. A liquid digital valve. And this one does need to be a digital valve because this one is actually going to be automated. And a couple of liquid volume pumps. A heat exchanger which is a nifty device that's going to allow us to use some of this heat to warm this water up to a usable temperature. And five insulated liquid tanks. We're going to plunk that down right there. Of course, we use blue for all of our water stuff. Most of it's already blue by default. So before we start, we need to actually get this uh, set up where we can put water in it. And to that end, we're going to bring this ice crusher we had over there. Let's set it up right here. I think we'll wire that data port into just in case. I don't think we'll need it, but you know. All right. Not using insulated pipes for the water there because it's going to be cold. So we may as well keep it uh, keep it cold until it gets to the storage where we can heat it. We'll also be using this system to put oxides and volatiles into the uh, into the waste system, so it can be filtered for use.
this is going to be another system where we're just going to leave this volume pump on. Because we, we always want it to be pulling the water out of this pipe. But don't worry so much about the waste because this is tied directly into the waste tank. So there's plenty of volume in there. It's going where it needs to go. But in this case, because we have an insulated system and we want to control that temperature, this acts as a, uh, a way to get up all the water out of that pipe and into the system where it can be heated up. Okay, so that gives us a way to get our water in there. We gotta get this pump turned on though. We're gonna hold off on wiring that up though. So we're gonna need this heat exchanger so that we can Get this water to a usable temperature and and keep it keep it there. Give ourselves a little room so we have room for our plumbing. And in this case, we're going to use a liquid and gas heat exchanger. You can build three different versions with this. One is just liquid to liquid, and the other is just gas to gas. But the liquid and gas is the one we want. And this is our output, this is our input. We're going to use this volume pump to pull our liquids back into the tank system. And there's our digital valve. Take a break to get a sip, and then we'll come back and handle the wiring on this. Okay, so now we're ready to hook this thing up. Now this doesn't uh, doesn't need power. It's a passive system. And essentially what it does is it tries to equalize the temperature between the two sides. We need to tie into our hot waste line and bring it over here.
Okay. So now any water that we allow to flow in there, it'll work similar to the radiator cooling loop on this. Turn the valve on, it allows the the water in this system to be in that system. Turn the valve off and this pump will pull it back out. And I think that's got it pretty much hooked up. Now, at this point, go ahead and set this. Turn it on, and we can leave it on. Now, right now, we have no water in the tank. Let's give these things some meaningful names. Okay. Again, no water in the tank, but we can fix that quick. I prepared. Let's drop one of those in there and then we'll see how it looks. Turn this on too. There we go. Now, as you can see, the water is negative 18 Celsius. It's warming up a bit, probably due to the uh, uninsulated pipe here. But that's not enough. We'll take care of that soon. But we can test this system now. 
Looks like it's stabilized at around negative 17. So let's give it a whirl. Warming up quick. Now it's going to continue to warm up a bit as it's pumping out the remaining fluid that was in the heat exchanger. But that's slowing down as this uh, as this empties out. We can see the water in that pipe between the pump and the heat exchanger is 483. which is the same as the waste temperature. But as it joins the rest of the water in the tank, that energy is dissipated. But we don't want to sit here and babysit this all the time, so we're going to automate this. I believe we're done there, so we can close this back up. So the way we're going to automate this is very similar to the way we automated uh, the waste temperature management of this IC10 here in the last episode. In fact, I started from the same program modified it and then saved it as another but I'll go through the changes I made first I need to hydrate all right so for this we've got our IC10 go ahead and name it all right We've also got a IC housing for it when we install it. So this uh, this is the code for the previous uh, IC10, the waste gas, uh, the, heat, the hot waste gas code. This uh, new program is right here, and I may put this on the Steam Workshop. If I do, I'll put a link to it. So let me go ahead and load that in. I've uh, changed the comments at the top to explain what it does. In this case, we're, instead of cooling, we're heating. So we have a minimum temperature instead of a maximum temperature. I've renamed that and a few other variables. And it works just like the previous code. It takes the temperature and pressure values from the storage tank for the water. If the temperature is above or greater than the minimum temperature, which in this case is Five Celsius, 278.15 Kelvin. Uh, and the reason for that is I actually am targeting for something around 10 Celsius. But uh, because it continues to heat as it empties out of the heat exchanger, uh, we cut off the valve a little early so that we don't overshoot. We don't want the water to be too hot because if we use it in our greenhouse, for example, it could kill the plants. So uh, we read in the temperature and pressure from the tank. If the temperature is above that minimum temperature, it goes to the section of code that turns the valve off. If it's less than or equal to, I've changed this. It's no longer DLT, it's BLE. Different function, same concept. If the pressure is less than or equal to the minimum pressure, in this case, zero, because it can't really be less than zero, then it will also turn off the valve. 
if neither condition is met, then it jumps to the function that turns on the valve, allowing water to flow into the heat exchanger. And again, revisit the previous episode to have all of this explained, but it's essentially the same code. With the exception that we're changing a, a couple of things here and there. And that's pretty much it. Export it to the chip. Let's put it in place. get our error code because we haven't set up our our device connection. Switch it back off. This one's looking for the tank. Water storage tank. This one wants the valve. Water heater valve. Okay, so when we turn this on, we should see this valve turn on, and then we can watch the temperature up. And there it goes. Once this tank temperature reaches 5 degrees Celsius, it should turn off. But it did. No, it did it. Yeah, yeah, it did. But as you can see, it did overshoot the temperature. And that's why we cut off at 5 degrees instead of, say, 10 or whatever. Now, depending on how much water is in this tank, it will take longer for it to cool or heat. But yeah, that seems to be working just fine. I like it. So let's uh let's cram a little more ice in there and let's see what happens. You can see the actually, let's do this. We'll turn this pump off, get our cold water in there. We have water in here at zero degrees Celsius. 16 degrees in the tank. When I turn the valve on, this cold water should cool that enough, maybe, to cause this to kick back on. And 
there it goes. All right. There you have it. Automated water heating. And since this is an insulated tank, it should stay heated until we use it or add more cold to it. While we're at it, I might go ahead and put the rest of this uh, water in there and some of this oxide as well. And that pretty much does it for this episode. Um, again, might be a little shorter once it's edited down. I think I've hit the important parts. I feel like this series, uh, as I'm learning more about it, I'm still new to the YouTube thing. But I feel like this has sort of evolved into kind of a project of the week sort of thing. And I think that's a good thing. Nobody really needs to see me mining for materials or drinking water or feeding myself. I think we're really more interested in the projects that we build. And I, I mean, we, when I say that, your input uh, is important and helps me to decide what people want to see done. So, comments, suggestions, ideas, thoughts, I'd love to hear from you guys. I appreciate uh, whenever someone comments on one of the videos and gives me some feedback. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.